So everyone that watched last week's video and was wondering how that calf's doing that we started bottle feeding. Here's her mom here, and like I said, she just seems really sickly. So I don't know what's going on with her. I might get, need to give her a shot of medicine or something. She just hasn't been acting very well. And this black calf right here, this is the one that we picked up out of the slough. And he's doing fine. Seems like he's doing really good lately. So I don't think any harm happened to him. Yeah, I know, Mama. It was a big fiasco, wasn't it? So here's our calf here, our bottle calf. Looks like she's doing all right. I'm gonna come back out here with the bottle here in a minute, but just wanna do my rounds first. Look, Giffy, you need a bottle? And that's the newest calf that we had the other night when I got home from Salt Lake from delivering all that beef. He's nice and nestled in that straw there. There he goes. Looks like we might have ourselves another bottle fed calf like we had pepper last year i really didn't want to have another bottle calf just because there's so much work and you know they really get kind of expensive by the time you pay for all the milk replacer and everything else that you give them even over those first couple days just the claustrum that i had to put in there you know, that's almost 60 bucks there just in the claustrum and yeah so it, gets, it adds up pretty quick but i don't know what else can you do it goes it goes I gotta go get a bottle. Uncos. I think I'm gonna get a shot ready of antibiotics for that cow too. And give her a shot of that because I think she's got something going on with her. I try to use antibiotics very sparingly, but you know, sometimes you don't have much of a choice and they're definitely a good tool to have. So I'm not interested in making this political or saying you should or shouldn't use antibiotics. This is about me taking care of my cow, doing what I think is best for her, and just looking out for her health and welfare. I also purchased a pretty cool tool earlier this winter, and this will be a good time to show it to you guys. So this is a Capture dart gun. So I've bought this and used it a couple times for, for reasons I'll explain later on in the video. So what it is, it's just a dart gun, and it allows you to deliver medication to your cows from a distance, and you don't have to bring the whole herd in and run that one cow through the chute, or go out there try to rope it and you'll bring it down to the ground. So it's been, it's been really handy. I've used it a couple times, like I was saying. So it uses 22 blanks to propel the, the dart. And it also uses the charge inside of the dart to push that medicine out of the dart through the needle and into your, your cow or calf or whatever you're shooting. So they've got a bunch of different options on size of darts that you can use. This one's a 10cc dart. This one's a 5cc dart. And those, those are the only two sizes that I've got. But I think you can get them as small as 1cc and up to 20 cc's I believe or is what the range is. Then they've got different options and needles. So they call this one a, a side port needle. I'll unscrew it here and show you. So you can see the end here is closed off and there's a port here on the side. So when the dart impacts, it forces the medication out through the side here. They call it a side port. Then it screws into the dart here. It's got an O-ring here to keep your medication in there. And this dart is just hollow. You can screw this end. And you see it's just a, a hollow dart. And on this side, you've got another screw end here that has an O-ring that seals the dart from the back side. Then this yarn's colorful where you know you can find your dart after you, you shoot your cow. And then I hope I, I think it helps keep all the pressure behind the dart to propel it. And you've got these these plungers. The way these work, I'll show you. And you've got these slide plungers, I guess is what you'd call them. And these go inside of the dart. And you've got these charges here that go into the plunger. So I don't know how they ignite really, unless it's just from the impact from when the dart hits the, the cow or if it's from the 22 blank going off. I'm not sure how they ignite this part. So the way this works is they've got this little bit of lube that you put on the plunger here. So lube it up a bit. And you put this in the back side of the dart. I'm gonna grab a, a rag real fast. And you got this rod and just run that plunger through there and kind of lube up your, your dart. Get some lube in there. So now that you got your, your dart lubed up, so this charge here, see how there's a hole in the back of the plunger? So this goes in there like so. 
you push this in the back side of the dart, push it up a little ways, then you grab your, your plug here and plug this end. And screw it, you know, snug it down. To finish loading the gun, you know, just put your medication inside the, the dart here. So I'm just using I'm just using a syringe and needle to fill it up. And you fill it up as close to the top as you can without overfilling it. And just remember your needle. It's gonna take up a little bit of space when you screw that down. So now the, the dart's ready. And I try to keep them standing up just so you know none of the fluid runs out. Because I think if you lay it on the sides, it'll probably drip out a bit. So they've got different sizes of blanks and chargers that offer different uh, ranges in power, depending on how far you think you're going to be away from your from your animal. So they've got more powerful blanks that you know if you think you're going to be way far away, and just propels the dart you know that much further and faster. So then to load the gun, it just opens up. This back part here pulls out. And then I don't know if you can see, but there's a little hole right here. And that's where your 22 blank goes. So it just goes into there. And we're going to grab our dart. And take your dart. And just put it in here. Just push it in a little ways with your finger. And when you put this back in, it'll adjust it to where it needs to be. All that colorful yarn kind of makes it a little tight, but just work it in there. And that slides into, into place. Close your gun. We're ready. We'll go out there and show you how it works. So the dart gun's ready. So we'll get that bottle ready for the, for the calf. So it's been long enough. We're just on to milk replacer. I'm not giving her a colostrum anymore. We're kind of out of that time window where she can absorb, absorb it. So I got my bottle and the dart gun. We'll go feed that calf first, just while the bottle's warm. And we'll take care of that cow with the, the dart gun after that. So one way you can tell that there's something going on with that cow is she's isolated herself. So I've got a couple cows over there, but they're with their calves nursing. And that cow's got a calf too over there. But the rest of the herd is all over here. They're all by the gate and right here by the slough. And that's how that cow's been for the last two or three days. She's kind of isolated herself and she's always off in the distance. So that's that's why I think there's something going on with her. So we'll see if we can't help her out a bit. So I'm hoping I can get this new bottle fed calf trained up like I had Pepper last year where I can just call her in from the gate. Meh. Meh. I'm not all that excited about having to do that twice a day again. Here's our cow. So when you shoot them, you want to aim for the neck. And I know you don't want to be too close to them because then that dart has too much power when it impacts and can do some damage. So I usually say 15 yards away or so. My guess. So hopefully I don't embarrass myself and miss. So like I said, you just cock it and it's ready to go. I don't know how well you can see, but that dart hit that cow. It usually takes a minute, but it should fall out here for too long. So I said, just watching her, you can tell there's something going on with her. Her ears are hanging low, her head's kind of hanging low. She just acts like she's sick, like there's something going on with her. Hey, go. Well, she's mellow enough, I was able to just reach out and pull it out. They usually fall out pretty quick, but I didn't want to wait around and follow it around the pasture. So this one's a reusable dart. They sell like uh, one-time use ones, but I just bought these reusable ones because I didn't want to have to be buying new ones every time I used them. So they say open this back end first in case there's still some pressure 
built up in here from when that plunger went forward. So when screwing the needle here, that plunger should have went from here all the way up to here and expelled that medication out. See, look in there. You can see the plungers here at the end where the needle was, so it pushed all that fluid out through the other end and through the, the port on this needle. And here's the charge. So like I said, it's been pretty pretty handy. And it's smart to clean out your gun every time too, just because the you know the antibiotics are pretty corrosive on metal. So then you see the 22 blank there. It's just got this little plunger deal here. Just push that out. And now it comes your blank. So they call this the blank adapter. So this actually unscrews and you can clean all this up too. Just make sure it's all nice and clean. Then you've got the rod here. It has another piece that will screw on the end. So then you get your jag or cloth or whatever and run that up and down your barrel to you know, clean it out. So then I'll just take and clean this dart up, you know, wash it off and so it's ready for next time. And here's the plunger. Here's the charge that we put in. So there's, like I said, there's some kind of, there's a spring in there. So, like I said, I'm not exactly sure how the, the plunger side of it works, but I really think it's when the impact from the cow, probably something to do with the spring and then some kind of, you know, ignition powder that expels that, that plunger. So I'll just wash the plunger off and get it clean, then, you know, throw away the rest of it. So if you guys are wondering what made me make the decision to buy that dart gun in the first place, I'll tell you. So back in November, I had some cows that came home late off the forest. And my dad and I were running them through the chute here and giving them their vaccines and whatnot. And I had one cow that got into the chute and she reared up and she got her hoof, her front hoof, stuck in here. And it slid between this piece of metal here and the frame of the chute here. And so she had her hoof, you know, let me see, suck in there, down in there like that, if you can see. So then as she struggled more and more, the, her hoof slid further and further down between the this piece of metal and the frame here, and it cut through her skin, and I'm pretty sure it cut a bunch of tendons and all that. So I bet my dad and I spent almost 10, 15 minutes with crowbars and everything else trying to get her hoof wedged up and out of there so we could get her out of the chute. We finally got her out. And she went over here and just like collapsed and got back up and then she was on the fight. She was hurt and she didn't want anybody around her. Then we couldn't run her back to the chute because she could barely walk and I didn't want to even try to get in, get her in here, then have her collapse or something, get her stuck in there, then you know, have her suffocate or whatnot. She had that big slash right through her, her leg there and just is, you know, in November, so things are still a little bit muddy and not quite frozen yet. So I, I knew it was going to get infected, just, you know, the way things go. So that's what spurred my decision to look into one of those dart guns. And I used it on her. You know, I gave her, you know, a round of antibiotics and ended up saving her. And that cow even surprised me with a calf the other day. She ended up just staying out here with my dad's herd because that's where she ended up. And we just didn't move her back over with my herd. And the other day I went out there to help my dad feed and I was surprised to see a new calf on the ground. It was a small calf, but... It was a live calf and she gave us a calf. So like I said, that gun, like if, if she lives and that calf lives, it'll already pay for itself, that dart gun will. But like I said, I was pretty surprised that she had that calf because there for a while she was looking pretty bad and she'd lost a lot of weight. And I figured if she was pregnant, she would have just sloughed off the calf. She was in that bad of shape. But after shooting her a few times with those antibiotics and whatnot, that seemed to bring her out of it and we got a new calf out of it. I don't know how well you can see her, but that's the cow and her calf that I first used that capture dart gun on. So she's looking pretty good. I don't think she'll ever go up on the range again, but she's got a little calf with her, a small calf, but it's alive. Well, since I'm out here feeding my dad's cows and showing you that one cow of mine that's out here with them, I figured I'd show you these gates that we put on this elk fence. 
and show you why we put them up as high as we did. So I just had to scrape this down because I couldn't hardly get the gate open. And this other side, you know, it's it's pretty much stuck where it's at now unless you come in here and shovel it out or get a bucket and clean this out a bit. Because I'm pretty sure we kept these gates a foot and a half up off the ground and you can see how much the snow's already built up around them. So this will probably be a pretty quick video, but I just wanted to show you guys this capture dart gun and show you how I use it and what my thoughts were on it. So and also real quick, if you guys want more information on these capture dart guns or looking to buy one for yourself, I'll put some links down in the description for you and you can go from there. I was able to order mine from the Value Vet book and that's where I got mine from. So hope you guys enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. Have a good day.